said that you wanted to talk business, so let's talk. Let's talk. Lonnie Braden. He's loyal, he's trustworthy, he's honest. He's like a son to me. Now, you know he didn't kill that muckraker. You must have talked to Braden's wife. She told you why I turned down the case. Look, I'm not a saint, Tolliver. And by and large, I don't defend saints. I like to keep a varied clientele that keeps the juices flowing. I also like my independence. And I can afford to be choosy. How choosy? Well, I recently turned down $500,000 under similar circumstances. I'll double it. One million in advance, in any currency, to be deposited in your name in any country in the world. <laughs> no point in my being a fanatic, is there? Mr. Hellinger. You're a man of enormous good sense. Shall we join others? My pleasure. been hustled away from my friends. What's the matter with you? Look, Tolliver, you're too bright to be guilty of stupidity. So for now, I'm going to assume you know nothing about putting a squeeze to a deputy district attorney. What are you talking about, squeeze? Telephone calls, threats against the person. She said ask you, so I'm asking. Threaten a deputy DA? Well, I was. Threaten one? Hell, if it was that easy, the jails would be empty. Maybe one of your stooges? No look at the pileups and brownie points? No way. I got them paper trained. They wouldn't even change the part in their hair without a written okay from me. Oh, come on, why the long face? I saw the lady spook, so what do you care? How does a mistrial hit you? No, wouldn't like that. You tell me something, Tolliver. 
I mean, you got such a tight-knit operation. Who was it leaked to Savage? None of my people. Now, it could be what you fellas call street scam. Little here, little there. Provocative, as far as it went. Nothing the grand jury could build an indictment from. You know that, Nick. Okay. Hey, now, Nick, wait a minute. Hey. I was wondering about my boy. He looked a little peaky in court today. You mean your million-dollar baby? <laughs> That's him. What in the hell is this? Oh, uh, just call me eccentric. What makes him worth so many pesos, Tolliver? Are you afraid that if you didn't go to bat for him in a great big, big way, he'd turn state's evidence? If I thought that, Mr. Hilton, I'd buy me an ice pick. I'd buy a man who could use ice pick. Then I'd buy a second man to hold Braden while the ice pick man stuck it in his ear. I could do all that for $15,000. But why do I spring for a million? Because in the average week, Mr. Hellinger, Alonzo Braden saves our organization that much in tax loopholes. Uh, Mrs. Gradowski, uh, would you join us, please? <coughs> uh, Mr. Hellinger has just requested a 24-hour recess. Evidence has reportedly come to light that could dramatically affect the outcome of this trial. How says the prosecution? Will it join in the motion? It will, Your Honor. Thank you. I mean, I had it all laid out for him. The porno rackets, the distribution outlets. Shall we go downtown? Hold it right there, Mr. Helger, if you would, please. Virgil? You're wired, aren't you? Been a little change in plans, Nick. Leo, bring your car. I don't want my car. I want to know what the hell's going on. Well, that's simple. I'm taking Donovan off your hands. Oh? And then what? What do you care? We've got his taped confession. That's all you need to spring Braden. I'm not talking about Braden. I'm talking about Detective Donovan. Well, that's simple, too. You're going to read about that in the morning papers. The one that reads like this? Having confessed to attorney Nicholas Hellinger, Detective Donovan, filled with remorse over his terrible crime, went home and shot himself. Five times in the head. We had a deal, Tolliver. That old boy's been bleeding my operation, Nick. What he gave to Savage, I'm paying for that, too. Bail bonds, harassment, public notoriety. May I speak to you privately? That was your speech. Now here's mine. As an officer of the court, I hereby place Detective Donovan under protective custody. If you so much as put a wrinkle in the crease of his trousers, I'll have you behind bars. Are you telling me that if I want this cockroach, I better blow a hole in you? I would have chosen less sanguinary language, but that's the general idea. You're tempting me, Nick. I might just have to do it. <laughs> oh, no, you won't, Clint. There are two voices on that tape. What are you going to tell your, your stockholders, the district attorney's office? You didn't get where you are, letting emotion rule your brain. Virgil? You can host that thing. Let's go, detective.
took one hell of a chance. Suppose he'd blown you away. Well, then you'd have to make the trip to Philadelphia all alone. 